I've made some changes to the two uh, capacitor leakage testers. The one on the left is one that goes back some years. Uh, my first video on this was I think three years ago and I think it is my number 135 but it's actually based on an article in Popular Electronics that goes back to 1959 and the one on the right is a packaged version of a prototype that I put together uh, based on a, an idea from Restore Old Radios and we'll look at the circuits on these in a minute and I'll talk about the, the update. Uh, most of the update is really to this one. The uh, On this one all I've done is just uh, put it in a box and uh, clean it up, clean up the circuit a little bit. Uh, but we'll look at that as well. So I thought one thing that I might do is uh, publish this video early because uh, soon I'm going to be doing uh, a, a little bit more involved testing of capacitors, electrolytics and film capacitors, uh, etc. Uh, and I've done some videos on things like testing for tube circuits and testing leakage and things like that. What I want to do is look at it from the other point of view, from the standpoint of the kind of uh, capacitor and the kind of circuit that you're going to use it in and what's the more appropriate uh, tests and, and uh, what are the instruments that you can do to do that. So uh, let's take a look at these uh, these circuits and then I'll... Uh, uh, oh, by the way, yeah, let me... Uh, here is the... the tester and you see what I'm doing there is I'm testing it on a string of uh, resistors. I think this is about 150 mega ohm. And you see it uh, it definitely will show 150 mega ohm of leakage. And and of course the uh, the issue with capacitors is you you need to have the leakage be above some level. I tend to think of 100 mega ohms as the uh, the limit for most circuits. If their leakage is less than 100 mega ohms, I throw the capacitor away. If it's over 100 mega ohms, depending on the circuit, I might go ahead and keep it. And so this tester will do uh, will certainly reveal 150 mega ohms or less of uh, leakage resistance. So it's a real good go no go tester. Let's take a look at that circuit and then we'll talk about the changes to the original DIY capacitor tester. Here's the circuit that uh, that I modified if you will from a circuit originally published by uh, Restore Old Radios. I won't go into this again because I've already talked about it, but basically the advantages of this uh, device is it operates low voltage. And because it operates low voltage, uh, it's safer than the original DIY capacitor tester. It also has some slightly different characteristics, but it works pretty well for testing capacitors. The only drawback to this tester that I see is it doesn't stress the capacitor with high voltage. So if you're going to be using capacitors in high voltage circuits, nothing wrong with using this this circuit, but you probably should stress them to their intended working voltage before you test the leakage on a tester like this. And of course, be sure that when you do that, that you discharge the capacitor before you connect it to this circuit. You do not want to connect a charged capacitor to this circuit. So now let's take a look at the original DIY tester and the changes I've made to it. So this is the original DIY capacitor leakage tester from Popular Electronics and I'm testing here a 630 volt film capacitor and I'm using the high voltage setting. We'll talk about that in a second. And the, uh, the way this works is when you press the button you get a flash if the uh, capacitor is good. That is if it is a capacitor you'll get a flash. If it's a good capacitor 
the flash will occur once and, and stay out, especially if it's a film capacitor or a mica or any other capacitor that does not have uh, usually very high leakage uh, in normal practice. Uh, one thing that you'll notice about this tester is I have replaced the toggle switch with a push button switch. I did that out of a sense of safety. I, I am usually pretty careful not to touch the test leads while I'm using this tester. I, I hold the rubber boots, but with the toggle switch it was possible to leave voltage applied. And I did that originally because I thought I would uh, use it to uh, perhaps in some cases to form uh, electrolytic capacitors and uh, or some people call it reforming basically uh, a, uh, an electrolytic has to be formed in other words if it uh, when it's first manufactured or if it's been sitting for a while the electrolytic layer the oxide layer that is deposited inside has to be formed onto the one plate to provide the capacity and that requires a voltage and so originally I was thinking of using this for that purpose but I later uh, since have changed my mind and I've gone back to the original design which just uses a push button switch and when you turn loose of the push button switch it shorts the leads and that's another one of the changes that we'll talk about when we look at the schematic. Here is the schematic of the original popular electronics uh, tester that appeared in the December 1959 Popular Electronics on pages 61 and 62. So what I have done is modified this circuit uh, a bit. Some of these changes were made uh, several years ago in some of the earlier videos I did on this tester and others are more recent based on some ideas that viewers have suggested and thoughts of my own and so on. So one of the things that this tester does that is I think helpful is it adds a switch and this may be a little hard to see but basically what what I did is on the original tester I broke this connection here and put a switch in so that in one position of the switch, this resistor is connected to the same place it is in the popular electronics version. But in the other position, this resistor is connected to the midpoint of these two capacitors. What that does is it gives you two voltages to select. In the original position, this unit puts out uh, a little over 300 volts which is perfectly uh, appropriate for testing a 400 volt capacitor or higher. But a lot of radios that operate uh, transformerless radios like the All-American 5s and, and modifications of that, the capacitors in those generally run 150 to 200 working volts. And so by putting the switch in, you can switch to the low position and only use the voltage across this capacitor, not the doubled voltage. And that only runs about 140 or so volts, maybe 150 uh, uh, depending on your line voltage. But the test then can be run even on lower voltage capacitors like uh, 200 volt and even 150 volt working volt capacitors. So that was one change that I made actually some time ago. I also in the original video suggested that if you want to go up to like uh, 600 volts and test a 600 volt capacitor like that one I was testing with the, the, the other tester, one way to do it is to apply 240 volts here. If the uh, components you use including these capacitors have the right voltage ratings, this will work on 240 volts. One easy way to get 240 volts is to use one of those little auto uh, transformers that they use to boost, uh, I'll call it American voltage to European voltage. M m much of Europe operates on 240 volts. So if you have an appliance like say a, a low wattage, uh, say an electric shaver that is built for European use, you can buy transformers for about six or seven dollars 
that you plug into the American 120 volts and it produces 240 volts and then you can put that in front of this. So that's a way to go to even higher voltages if you want to. But the other changes that I've made to this are I inserted a small resistor. I'm actually using 470 ohms there, but you could use almost anything you want because the purpose of that is to not put a direct short across a charged capacitor when you first connect this. So if you have a capacitor that say is a 200 volt capacitor and it's charged to 200 volts, the uh, when you connect these leads, the old tester just had a short here. Well that is like putting a screwdriver across the leads of the capacitor. It's a, it's a pretty violent uh, discharge. And by adding a little resistor in series here, you lower the, uh, the amount of discharge current, and that means that the capacitor discharges more slowly. But if it's a fairly low value, like in this case I'm using just under 500 ohms, it will discharge the capacitor very quickly. Uh, the advantage to that also is when you have charged the capacitor by flipping this switch, and this is a push button switch and it's uh, sort of upside down, when you push the switch it goes from this position to up here. Uh, and it applies this full voltage to the capacitor. Then when you turn loose of the switch you want to discharge that capacitor. And the old way used to be just a direct short. I've stuck a resistor in here in line with it. And by the way, that does not affect the circuit one bit. Because remember, it's the, re it's the relative amount of this resistance to this resistance. So a 500 ohm resistor here is within the tolerance of, of a 100K, say a 10% uh, film resistor or carbon resistor. The other thing that I have done is I have put some 10K resistors across these uh, capacitors internally. And the, the reason for doing that is so that when you unplug the tester, these capacitors inside discharge. And the, this value can be anything. You could, uh, you could experiment with it. I use 10K and that seems to work fine. The, the uh, actual voltage of this tester doesn't go down by more than a volt or two when I use 10K. But you might want to use 100K or uh, 500K or a meg or whatever. But at any rate, you do want to discharge these capacitors internally so that if you open this box up and are working on it, you don't have uh, 150 volts on each of these capacitors, total of 300 across the total. So those are the changes that I've made and let me show you the tester one last time. I kept the high-low switch and changed the uh, connection switch, that is the one over here on the right, to a uh, single pole double throw momentary so that when you press it, and by the way you may notice that there's still a little residual charge uh, on there because uh, I just unplugged it. Uh, so it does take a, a 10 or 15 seconds for these capacitors to leak off their charge through these, uh, these uh, 10K resistors. Uh, but at any rate, that is the changes. Now where I'm going to go from here is I'm going to do some capacitor testing. And I'll try to pick both good and bad capacitors, both high voltage and low voltage, both uh, electrolytic and non-electrolytic. And we'll talk a little bit about the uh, things that we introduced in the concepts video on LCR testing concepts and how they apply to particular capacitors in particular circuits. So look forward to that, but it probably will be some weeks before I can post that because it will probably take me that long to get all the data. So hope you enjoyed this. 
I hope that you will build one of these testers, maybe both, because they are appropriate for different things. This, for example, is more appropriate for using on capacitors that you're going to use in tube circuits because it's higher voltage. But you might want to build the other tester because it's a little bit safer. Either way, have some fun, stay safe, and have a nice day.